In today's video, we're covering Cassava Sciences, a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company out of Austin, Texas, which I have been following for quite some time, but hesitated to cover on my channel. This is about to change today. Cassava Sciences focus on first-in-class medicine for people with debilitating neurodegenerative conditions. And this is predominantly uh, targeting Alzheimer's disease with their flagship product currently in clinical development, which is called Simufolam. And because proper treatment cannot be administered without properly diagnosing the disease, hey, why not add it? They are also trying to develop a blood test that is able to identify Alzheimer's disease without a doubt. And the work that Cassava are doing is without a doubt very important because in the US today there are about 5 million people who have Alzheimer's disease. And if we look at one of their publications from 2015, you see here that Alzheimer's disease is presented as one of the greatest healthcare burdens affecting over 35 million people worldwide. It is estimated that this number increases to 150 million by 2050. Considering that there is no cure for the disease and it is a progressive disease, meaning the patients uh, do worse and worse over time, this represents a tremendous burden on the healthcare system, the caregivers and carers for these patients who um, suffer from the disease and progressively get worse. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. I'd like to welcome all the new and recent subscribers to my channel. Welcome! The reason why I haven't covered Cassava Sciences previously on my channel is because, as you can see here, the stock is extremely volatile. And in particular, in the last few months, uh, there were several events that explain also the sharp and sudden decline from the peak of 117. So you can see here on August 27, all the way down to about twelve forty four dollars september 15. so uh, i do not want to be responsible if you uh, cannot stomach a stock with that much volatility but nevertheless the outlook has much improved and i feel quite confident that the long-term prospects for this stock are really fantastic um, you know me if you have followed my channel i'm not the one to hype any stocks i focus much more on the science um, that said, let's go back to the science and I explain also this sudden drop here. In case you're really not familiar with Cassava Sciences, uh, you probably are not familiar with their press releases. I like to go into the not so distant history of press releases to uh, just very briefly recap some of the key events. You see here on August uh, 24th, Cassava Sciences announced an agreement with TA on a special protocol assessment for its th phase 3 studies for simufolam for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. So, clearly, the company is getting ready to uh, start its phase 3 studies for simufolam. And you probably know that following phase 3 studies, generally if the medicine performs as intended, and the right uh, patient population is identified, that approval of the drug will be imminent. 24th was ultimately um, the peak that we see here in the uh, stock price as well. And then surprisingly, perhaps to you, a very sharp and rapid decline of the stock price to a low of just uh, shy of $44. Now, why was that? That is because a um, short sellers have attacked the company, alleging that some of the data they have published back in 2012 actually was um, yeah, modified and not accurate and uh, with some other uh, allegations. This has spurred quite a lot of um, questions on the presented data that the company has shared in the past. Clearly, the goal of these short sellers was to, of course, benefit from the declining stock price by making allegations that the uh, integrity and the data presented by Cassava Sciences should be put into question. Now, the same applied ultimately to the uh, journal 
which published the data, some of the data that was put into question by the short sellers. And this is the Journal of Neuroscience. Then, on August 25th, Cassava Sciences responds to all of the allegations made by the short sellers in a lot of detail. However, the damage and the stock price uh, was already done since most investors and the stock market at large uh, don't ask questions, just make the worst assumptions. And this was ultimately then the result of the dramatic, dramatically declining stock price. The short sellers had done ultimately the damage to the stock price. And one of the articles they or the data presented in an article in the Journal of Neuroscience was actually an article from 2012. So they had to go actually quite back a lot uh, in, in the past in order to find anything that uh, they could yeah, try to uh, put into question. In this article, the uh, short sellers were alleging that these so-called Western blots which are in uh, these articles, or in this article, uh, were fraudulent and uh, misrepresented. Undeterred by the noise created by the short sellers, Cassava Sciences continued to um, publish data and release a statement related to their previously disclosed Phase 2b clinical study results. This was done on August 27. And then on September 3rd, Cassava were publishing a public statement regarding the recent allegations. And sticking to the high-level view we are taking currently, you can also see that Cassava Sciences continue with their uh, clinical research. They announced the 12-month uh, interim analysis in their open-label study on September the 22nd and were um, doing the work for the uh, phase three efficacy trial with a simulfilum for the treatment of uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease. Though when we take a look at the stock price, you can see that uh, the stock price still remained really, really low until ultimately uh, something quite spectacular and fantastic happened. Uh, when the stock price you see in early November shot way back up again, in fact, jumped by almost 50%. And this was due to the uh, fabulous press release uh, from the Journal of Neuroscience, who uh, conducted their own investigation into the allegations which were made uh, related to the Western blots in this 2012 um, publication because obviously the journal also uh, felt under attack with regards to the um, peer-reviewed uh, scientific um, yeah, peer review process. And when they published the press release, this basically yeah, completely refuted the allegations made by the short sellers. And this in the end was uh, the reason why the stock price went up. Ultimately, yeah, I'm really happy for the company. I'm really happy that science and uh, ethics really prevail. I did not doubt that Cassava Sciences uh, are a very rigorous scientific company. When the stock price of a company comes under attack, as much as we have seen with Cassava Sciences from fraudulent short seller allegations, well, this potentially could have had uh, significant impacts on the ability of Cassava Sciences A, to raise capital on the market. Um, fortunately, they did not have to do this at this stage. But also, you can imagine that this might have implications on the critical uh, research work going forward. And ultimately, while well, this impacts, of course, the patients suffering from Alzheimer's disease who are desperately waiting for a medicine that can not only, well, cure them, but ultimately, as we have seen in the published uh, clinical trial data, improve the cognition scores uh, of participants in the study. What I had not mentioned previously is that the short sellers also filed a so-called citizen petition to the FDA, which was dated on August uh, 21 as an evidence of wrongdoing by the part of Cassava Sciences. Um, here is the interesting part, actually. So um, the uh, Cassava Sciences have worked with the S FDA, obviously, in order to progress with their plans for the phase three um, study. 
And five days after this uh, citizen petition, which was filed by the short sellers, uh, was submitted to the FDA, Cassava announced that it had reached an agreement with the FDA on the special protocol assessments for the phase three uh, studies of simufulam for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. You have to realize that uh, citizen petitions generally are not uh, accepted or uh, acted on by the FDA. And uh, I have seen in some cases about 80 or 90 percent uh, basically are yeah not necessarily ignored but have no consequence for the activities of the FDA so obviously in this context you can imagine when uh, cassava wants to plan a phase three uh, study and work closely with the FDA that surely the FDA are very much aware of all the data that has been obtained how it was obtained as well as the results uh, during the phases one and two and the fact that they agreed with the protocol assessments for the phase three really speaks to the integrity of cassava sciences and the rigor of the science they do and apply to their studies. I mentioned the previous citizen petition because now we're back at the November 4th announcement uh, by the Journal of Neurosciences, which was republished by Cassava Sciences as well, which had a significant impact on the stock price. You can see here the mentioning of a uh, second citizen petition, which was uh, submitted to the FDA by an individual unknown to Cassava Sciences. Ultimately, so this second petitioner, as it's quoted here, is requesting the FDA for approval of simufulam and immediate initiation of phase four clinical trials for further efficacy, safety assessment, and most critically, to address one of the greatest needs in modern medicine. So in other words, this may be a patient, we don't know who this person is, but ultimately what this person is asking the FDA to do is to approve the damn thing because absolutely patients need this type of medicine as it is really the only medicine to date that has the clinical evidence of improving cognition scores in Alzheimer's disease. And that is absolutely huge for the quality of life of the patients suffering from Alzheimer's disease their family members, caregivers, but of course also the burden on the healthcare system will be tremendously reduced. So what does this all mean in the end? I doubt that the FDA will act on this particular second citizen petition because surely the right process is to go through phases one, two, and three. And we can take a look at what is planned for the phase three trial with uh, cassava sciences so here we are at uh, clinicaltrials.org we see the sponsor is cassava sciences and what they are doing is ultimately testing their drug simufolam and versus a placebo and there are 750 patients or participants who are going to be enrolled in this particular randomized study um, you can see here estimated start date is, well, November, this is right now, um, with the completion date uh, October next year. So this is a rather quick phase three study, um, which yeah, ultimately can really have a huge impact when data from this study is published, as well as the, if the results continue to be positive, well, then the approval of simufolam actually is not that far out. To wrap up the video, let's take a quick look at the third quarter financials, which Cassava Sciences published on November 10th. In the third quarter, ending in September, their net loss was, as you can see, 9.6 million US dollars, which was, if you argue, substantially more, of course, than the 1.4 million, which they had in the same period just a year before. However, this makes a lot of sense, and I am not worried about this largely increased uh, loss per quarter at all because this shows that they are really gearing up towards the phase three clinical uh, study. As we can see here, the net cash used in operations was 22.2 million for the first nine months of this year. Um, this is slightly up from the previous guidance because of significant prepayments made to contract research organizations for their phase three clinical program with Simufala. $22 million also were uh, spent in order to purchase an office complex building in Austin, Texas, which will serve as the company's future corporate headquarters. Now, this might be a smart move. I assume that property prices in Austin are going to increase, uh, especially with uh, Tesla's Giga Austin uh, facility also becoming online. 
and definitely drawing probably a larger uh, crowd of uh, people wanting to work, for example, for Tesla, but possibly for cassava sciences as well. I lived in Austin for many years, Hook'em Horns, uh, UT Austin. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very nice place to be. Financially speaking, cassava sciences have a pretty solid balance uh, sheet. You can see they have roughly 241.5 million in cash and cash equivalents, which is substantially more than they had uh, 93 million as of December 2020. And they have no debt. When we look at the net cash for operations for this year, estimated between 25 to 30 million in comparison to their cash equivalents of 241 million, the company has a pretty uh, solid balance sheet and does not need to raise capital anytime soon. Um, however, of course, R&D expenses and etc. are still up also, and that's no surprise compared to the previous period. And this is primarily, as they state here, due to the manufacture of clinical trial supplies and, of course, for the initiation of the phase three clinical program. Um, as we all know, clinical research and then especially as larger patient uh, numbers are involved is increasingly expensive. So the most costly phase is, in fact, the phase three. And you recall they are enrolling roughly 750 patients in that study, which is bound to uh, conclude uh, towards the end of 2023. In summary, I believe that cassava sciences have a very bright future ahead of them, considering the devastating nature of Alzheimer's disease, the fact that there is no true treatment which to date has really shown as much improvement in the cognition score as uh, cassava's simufalam did. If you can stomach the volatility of the stock, or you would like to take profits in between, try to sell at highs and lows while well, you are on your own on this one. Um, certainly, I think what for some investors certainly might make sense is, no pun intended, to just purchase the stock and then forget about it um, and come back ultimately when the phase three clinical trials are completed. Of course, as always, there are no guarantees that phase three trials will be successful, but based on what we have seen so far from phases one and two, I think the likelihood is very high. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.